Hello, this is William from Visual Components. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create properties with constraints using Python API. To get started, I'll go to the Modeling tab. If you do not have access to the Modeling tab, you can create an add-on to complete this tutorial. I'll now create a new component, add a box or block feature, and zoom in. Now go to the Behaviors drop-down menu here, and then click Python script to add that behavior and open its editor. Let's start by creating properties in the component of this script. So I will delete these lines of code here. And I'll press the Control and Plus key to make the text in the editor bigger. And let's now get the component object of this script. So I'll write comp equals get component. And before we create a property, let's first search the component to see if the property already exists. So I'll write prop equals comp dot get property and this method allows you to search for a property by name and we're searching for a property called test real and if this property does not exist we have to create it in the component so if not prop prop equals comp dot create property and this method allows you to create a property of a given type and name and you also have the option of passing a constraint to the property. And let's see how this works. So let's create a property that can contain a real number. So its type will be VC real. Its name will be test real. Now there are three types of constraints you can use when creating a property. The default for every property you create with this method is VC property default. And let me make the script editor bigger so we can see the line. And what this constant here means, or this constraint, is that the only constraint to this property is its type, so you can pass any real number you want to this property. So you have two more choices for a constraint. You can use VC property limit or VC property step. Now be very careful, not all property types support these constraints. So for a limit constraint, you can use a real type property or an integer. This allows you to define a minimum value and a max value for the property. So the property can have any value within that range as well as the min or the max value. For a step constraint, you can use a real type property, an integer, or a string. And this allows you to define a set of values which are called steps. And let's see how these work. So let's select them here and just move them over there and comment them out and just keep them for our record. And now for our real type property instead of giving it a default constraint let's give it a limit. So after we create the property let's define the minimum value so prop.min value. Let's make it equal 10.5 and the max value let's make that 200.33. Now, understand we still have not assigned a value to the property yet. So let's do that, prop.value. And because this property has a limit constraint, I can only assign the min value, the max value, or a number in between that range. So let's do 50.5. And if I compile the code, let's go to the component graph panel, select the properties checkbox here, and underneath the root node, we can see the properties element. And if we expand it, we can see there's our property called test real with the assigned value of 50.5. Let's see how the step constraint works. So instead of looking for a property called test real, let's look for a string property, so test string. If it does not exist in the component, we'll create it. So we'll say its type is VC string. Sorry, it's a constant, so I need to make the letters capital. And then that new property will have that name of test string. And we cannot give it a constraint of limit, but we can give it a constraint of step. So now, we don't need to assign a min value or a max value, but we have to define the step values for the property. So I'll say prop.stepValues. And your set of values is going to be a list. So let's say we have three choices. So red, green, and blue. And now let's assign a value to the property, so prop.value. 
And remember the constraint we have, we can't say the value of the property example because that's not in the list here of step values. So a safe way to assign a value is to do prop.stepValues and give the index position of the value we want to use. So here we're going to use green, so it's the index of 0, 1, 2, and we're passing the green value to be the value of the property. Compile our code, go to the component graph panel, and yep, we have the test string property and it has that assigned value of green. Now we created properties using a component, but any type of object that supports this method of create property, you can create a new property in it. To give you an example, let's collapse the script editor and we have this feature here of the block. So if I select it in the 3D world, go to the feature properties panel, you can see it has these properties, but now let's add a new property to the feature. So I'll go back to my script, and now instead of creating these properties, actually we'll just comment this out. We'll keep everything for a record. Let's now get a handle for the block feature. So I'll say block equals comp dot get feature and the component object is the root node of the component so that's how I'm able to use this method here called get feature and you can search for feature by name so the name of the feature is block and now we'll say prop equals block dot get property and we'll look for a property called test integer and if that property does not exist in the block feature, oh, then we'll create it. So prop equals, we'll use the feature object with that method of create property, and we'll give its type. So we're creating an integer here. So its type will be VC integer. Its name will be test integer. And for a constraint, uh, let's actually use the default so we don't need to pass it there. So for its the value that we're going to give to the property, let's just give it a value of, let's say, 400. If you want, you can also give a hexadecimal value as well. So 0000, zero, zero, zero FF. We compile the code and then go back to our feature. So I selected the block feature here in the component graph panel. Let's minimize our script. And if we go to the feature properties panel, ho ho, we can see that there's that integer, that new property we created in the feature, and it has the value of 255 or 255. Now to review, let's go to our help tab here. Open the Python API reference. I'll make this a bit bigger for you. And what we did first is we used the component object. So go to VC component, then click methods. You can see you have the method here to create a property delete a property or to get a property. And if you need help with the constants for a property, you can click this link here, go to the constants page, and you can see here are the constraints you can use. We saw how the default constraint works, the limit and the step, and here are the types of properties you can create. But remember, not all these types of properties support these two constraints here called limit and step. We now go to VC feature. Remember we were working with the block feature and we go to its methods and scroll down we can see that yes it has the same method of create property delete property and get property let's close this out and this concludes the video so if you have any more questions please feel free to visit our forum at forum.visualcomponents.com and as always have a wonderful day